Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope we're all well and thank you very much for tuning in. In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily bring a SimBrief flight plan over into the CRJ. Whilst flight plans for the CRJ may not be all that long, if you use SimBrief for almost every flight like myself, using this method does make a lot of sense. Plus, it only takes, and I've calculated, a maximum of 11 clicks after generating the OFP on SimBrief to get it loaded in the FMS in the CRJ in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is uh, far less than entering 99% of the flight plans out there. Further, the CRJ at the moment cannot access the native flight plan manager for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you may well find yourself using SimBrief a hell of a lot for this, uh, this jet. Okay, so how is it done? So the CRJ itself has no network connectivity when it comes to accessing outside sources like SimBrief at this stage. So you cannot pull it directly from SimBrief through the CDU. However, it can access flight plan files on your hard drive. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, you may immediately think that this will involve lots of time consuming restarts of your simulator when you just want a new flight plan and what I've found is that you do not need to relaunch the sim or have it closed even in order for a new flight plan to be recognized by the CRJ. You can be sat in the cockpit like I'm going to demonstrate here and download the new flight plan file, drop it into the right location and it should be available right away through the CDU. To make the process as streamlined as possible, First of all, you will need to go on to SimBrief and get the SimBrief downloader. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Now, it isn't 100% needed, but to make the process as streamlined as possible, it, uh, it is recommended to get it and it will speed things up quite a lot for you. So I would highly recommend it. That's what we're going to use in this tutorial. Like I say, link to this page will be in the description of the video. Once you've got that installed, you'll then need to open it up. So I already have it open, open here. It does run down in the system tray. Double click it to open it up and you'll be greeted with this window. Once you first actually open SimBrief Downloader for the very first time, you will find that it asks you if you want to enable notifications. Now, I would highly, highly recommend this because when you export a OFP or when you generate an OFP from SimBrief, a notification window will pop up here and all you have to do then is just click on that once and then it will put the flight plan into the CRJ basically in a nutshell. So I'd highly, highly recommend having notifications on. Again, it is possible to do it without the notifications, but again, it's just extra clicks and we don't want that, do we? What I'd also recommend is to go to the settings menu. I would have this program run automatically at startup, again, just to reduce the amount of clicks and it's up to you whether you want to overwrite existing files. Then click save and close and we are ready to get things set up. So. At the moment, when you first download, you should have nothing ticked here. What we need to do is click the Aerosoft CRJ, so you can click anywhere on this bar to activate it, and then you'll need to set up the download directory. Now, I already have this in here because I have previously used this method. However, um, there are a couple of different paths you can use. Obviously, if you've got the Microsoft store version of the simulator you'll need to use the same path as me and if you have the steam version of the uh, simulator you will need to use a, a different path instead i'll stick these both on the screen very quickly now but i will also drop them in the description below just make sure that you change your username right here you'll need to just put your own username in this section here and 
you should be good to go. It does need to be this directory for it to work, so make sure you use this, this path. And once you've got that set up, that's all you really need to do with this window. You don't need to worry about it anymore. So I am actually just going to minimize that down to the bottom here. And in fact, we can actually just hit the cross here and it will run down in the system tray for us. So as you can see, this whole time I have had Microsoft Flight Simulator open in the background so let's just jump into the cockpit where i am on a turnaround and ready to input my flight plan so i have actually already prepared a flight plan so i'll just show you how this works in practice so like i say we've already done the setup now and what we need to do now is just generate an OFP. So here is one that I prepared earlier on. Uh, we've got a flight plan in here. And what we're going to do is we'll just click generate OFP. Now, once that's generated, you should see a notification in the bottom right here. Might just take a second or two. There we go. And then we, we, we need to just click on that, make sure it doesn't disappear and you'll get a message popping up saying that the file has been saved, the location, which is the Aerosoft CRJ folder we set up earlier on, and then the file name. This is quite important to remember. However, it does by default save the two iCal codes for the airports on your flight plan. So as you can see here, our origin is Kilo Alpha Tanga Lima, and then the destination is Kilo Mike India Alpha. And if I bring that window back up, you can see that is the name of the file. You don't need to worry about the extension on the file for this. Um, it's just the name really, but like I say, it's the two iCal codes. So we'll close that off now. And then all we need to do is go back to our simulator. And we basically just want to type this in to the root field here. So that's going to be Kilo Alpha Tango Lima to Kilo Mike India Alpha. And then we're going to stick that in the root field. Then as you can see, it's populated everything for us, including our runway, our flight number, and our alternate. If we hit next here, you can see it's populated the whole fl flight plan. So it's looking really good. And then what we can do is obviously just hit execute as normal and then everything is in there. You can see it started to draw the path on the MFD. And like I say, the whole flight plan is in there as well. Now you'll probably notice here I also have a uh, SID which has been inserted automatically. If we go to our departures and arrivals page, you can also see it's imported the Bang 2 SID for runway 09 left. So that has loaded in successfully. And also if we go to our perf page and perf in it, you'll also see the weights have been loaded in from the flight plan along with our cruising flight level and even an alternative cruising altitude. So that is it really. It works pretty, pretty well. And uh, if we go over to the EFB here, I'll just show you a couple of options that you will want to look at. So on the EFB, if we go to options, next page, and you'll see these two options here, load SIDS and STARS with flight plan and load perf data with flight plan. Obviously, I've got these two toggled on here, and that's why it also imported my SID, STAR and perf data. It's up to you whether you want those on. If you fly on VATSIM, VATSIM you might not want this top one on. And uh, this one, again, it's, it's personal preference, but I, I just had them on for this tutorial just to demonstrate that uh, it can also do that. Okay, so that is it for this very, very quick tutorial. Like I say, it was just a very, very short one to show you this feature real quick because I have seen a lot of people online asking this question already. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more CRJ content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have also just uploaded earlier today a full tutorial for the CRJ, which follows the documentation. So if you've just picked this up, then 
feel free to go check that out. I will put the playlist in the top right of the screen as well as in the end screen and the description. If you like the video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up or if not, the thumbs down. But once again, thank you very much for watching. It's the longest outro ever. <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.